Good morning! Woo, it's a full house, my word! We are not messing around today, ladies and gentlemen. It is a full house, and I'm very happy to be here to welcome you to the first ever Dream Pitch. Let's get moving a little bit. First off, I need to walk you guys through some information. Salesforce is a publicly traded company. We will be making potentially some forward-looking statements today and at other points of the day. Please don't make any investment decision based on that, only based on publicly available information, which is on our website. So please, please, please do that. Now, because this is a contest, we have more legal information for you. Uh, read this, because I am not a lawyer, but there are many in the room who are telling me I need to do this well. This is a contest. It's for entertainment purposes. Please don't make any investment decisions based on anything you hear here, although you may want to, which is lovely. That's the point. But again, contest, legal. All right. You guys get it, right? Everyone got the legal bits? Good. All right, let's move on. Now, welcome to Dream Pitch. Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, this is by far one of the coolest things we've done in my nine years at this company. It's awesome, all right? And what we're going to do is we're going to invite the judges up first and foremost, and then I'm going to walk you through the rules of the contest, and then we will have our contestants who keep tapping their feet and like cracking their knuckles come on up and do their thing. So the first thing I'm going to do is introduce these judges. And for the first time ever in my career, I have notes because these judges are so accomplished, it's very difficult to remember everything they've done. Let me start with the first judge. This man at age 12 started selling garbage bags door to door. He then went to Indiana, where while going to college, he ran the most successful bar in town. He then moved to Dallas, where he started Micro Solutions, which he sold to CompuWare. And then, because that wasn't enough to do, he started Broadcast.com, which he sold to Yahoo for, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, five point six billion dollars with a B. Yo, all right. He is currently, he owns the Dallas Mavericks, arguably one of the most valuable franchises in sports history. He is the CEO of AXTV and a shark on ABC's hit show Shark Tank. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mark Cuban! Let's get it started. Ha, let's get it started in here. Let's You're right get here, it started. Bud. Let's get it started Let's get it started All right, well, Mark's awesome. We know that. Pretty fired up. Next up, this man was a formal Google executive. He's the founder and chairman of Lowercase Capital, which is one of the most successful venture firms ever. He is an early investor in, hold on, Twitter, Uber, Instagram, Twilio, and Kickstarter, to name a few. He's won hundreds of awards, but his favorite award is that he won Worst Dressed by GQ Magazine for his obsession with cowboy shirts. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chris Sucker! Oh, yeah. Let's go, buddy. All right. Next up, next up, she is amazing. She is the CEO and founder of Broadband TV, which is an innovative media and technology company, which is changing the way we interact with our companies we do so with like stuff on business, online with, with content. She's negotiated some of the biggest media deals in the world, including how the NBA interacts with its fans, which is thank you very much. I'm sure Mark's happy about that too. Um, she's won a lot of awards. I'm going to list a couple. She was listed as one of the 100 most creative people in business by Fast Company. She's a young global leader from the World Economic Forum, and she's a member of the Power of Women list of Variety magazine. She is a force to be reckoned with, Sharazad Rafati, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! One more judge, last but certainly not least. It's hard to list off this person's accomplishments, but I'm going to do my best. He is a musician, an entrepreneur, a philanthropist, a technologist. He's won seven Grammys, an Emmy, a Clio. He was recently awarded by T3 Magazine the Tech Personality of the Year Award. He has started a company which is going to change the way we listen to music with the integration of a smart band and earphones. His philanthropic efforts have changed the lives of millions and millions of kids for the STEM. He is the awe-inspiring Mr. Will I Am. Woo! I think we 
got to say, let's get it started, right? <laughs> Cuban Ah, oh, here we go. The banter begins. I was waiting for that in the intro. <laughs> Don't worry, it'll come. All right. Now, I'm going to get off here in a minute because the real fun begins, but I'm going to walk you guys through a couple details just so we're on the same page, all right? First off, here's how Dream Pitch works. We have had a lot of people submitted for this contest. We have three finalists. You're going to meet them. Each of those three finalist companies will come up on stage. They'll do a four-minute pitch to our judges, which will be very regulated from a timing perspective. Then our judges will have four minutes to ask them whatever they would like, okay? We will go through the three contestants. After we're done, the judges will take their iPads. They will score the contestants, and we will anoint an ultimate winner, okay? So... What are they looking for when they're judging as the judges? They're looking at the team. They're looking at the technology. They're looking at the market. They're looking at how well the teams do their pitches and how impressed you guys are by them. Poise, the dance number. All, 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 all. Chris Saka. Mm -hmm. Love it. All right, off we go. So what are they winning? Each of the finalists has already won $30,000 worth of Salesforce services and product. They are competing for up to $200,000 in money from Salesforce Ventures. Each judge will have five Cody bucks worth $10,000, and they will be able to put them in here when they decide who they want to give their money to. They will also be judging the, the ultimate winner of this, pro, this contest will get a spot in our incubator. What's that? Our incubator we launched last week, it's a place for startups to really grow and incubate with Salesforce, learn how we do customer-focused company work and how they can as well as, as, building, as well as building a community around the whole thing. So, with that, I'm going to bring up, we're gonna go, right? No one wants to hear me talk, they wanna hear you. I'm, I'm, I'm the grease in this one, so let's go. We're gonna bring up our first contestant. Ladies and gentlemen, CRM Market, Tal Frankfurt, you have four minutes. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. My name is Tal Frankfurt. I am extremely excited and grateful to be here today. Thank you. If you hired a Salesforce consultant or a developer, or maybe you are a consultant or a developer, say I. <laughs> Judges. No, you're talking to us, right? Just I want know. To make sure. The ecosystem is exploding. Mark, according to IDC by 2020, <laughs> According to IDC, by 2020, the ecosystem is projected to create millions of jobs, more than $100 billion in new revenue, out of which more than 70% in Salesforce professional services. But there is a problem. There is a gap between these professional services and their projects, so these projects fail. Actually, according to Gartner, more than 50% of projects fail because they don't meet customers' expectations. Until today, I'd like to introduce you to CRM Market. Think about it as Angie's list for the Salesforce ecosystem. CRM Market is a trusted community marketplace where you can list your projects, discover talent, and implement Salesforce solutions. Fully built on the Salesforce app cloud with Heroku, CRM Market, unlike any other competitor, is helping you connect with your talent no matter what's the size of your project. We do that by creating the first Salesforce reputation score and a sophisticated matching algorithm that allows us to match a consultant with a project. Trust and feedback are key for us, so we constantly co collect and provide feedback throughout that experience. And since we launched CR Market earlier this year, we've seen tremendous amount of interest. Hundreds of consultants are already registered, literally thousands of Salesforce certifications and trailhead badges, and a growing number of projects. Actually, some consulting firms are using our platform to scale their practice up and down by outsourcing some of their development work on CRM Market. But I think that the best testimony to our success is the fact that some customers are already coming back to submit their second project. So let's take a look at CRM Market. I'm looking right now at the available project on the marketplace, and I'm a customer that just submitted this Salesforce redesign project. You can see that there is a lot of additional information about the project, but the most important part is that I received 15 questions, and these questions are shared among all the consultants, so everybody has a good understanding of my needs. I also received 20 bids, because I used the CRM market matching algorithm that suggested consultants based on their competencies and previous experiences. Let's take a look at one of these consultants. 
Parker's uh, Salesforce reputation score in the top right corner of the screen. You can see that we did that based on his Salesforce certifications, his trailhead badges, and of course, reviews and testimonials. Now, we want to make this platform bigger. We want to make it a platform for good. So effective today, we're going to waive the CRM market processing fees for nonprofit organizations. But we want to do more than that. We want to encourage all our consultants to join the Pledge 1% movement themselves and pledge it forward. And we wouldn't be able to do that without an amazing team. Brad actually started another company that created a reputation system for developers. And Jana brings a wealth of marketing experience. Myself, this is my second Salesforce company. I'm also the founder and CEO of Cloud for Good, the fastest growing Salesforce implementation partner for nonprofit organizations that I literally started from a one bedroom apartment and grew to a $10 million company. But I have to hire more people because my customers are demanding additional features. They're asking us to integrate our matching algorithm with artificial intelligence, and they're asking for better project management and time management tools. So I'd like to invite you judges to join me in Uberizing the Salesforce ecosystem. Thank you. I have some shirts for you. All right. My last. Thanks. Oh, right on, all right. Thank you so much. <clears throat> so I guess um, I can ask maybe the first question. I, I, I want to learn more about your, the competitive landscape, right? What is so special and unique about your product? Yeah. It's a great question. So we're looking at basically other marketplaces like Upwork as a competitive marketplace. There are two things that separate us. One is the specific aspect of CRM market and the focus on Salesforce and enterprise implementations. And the second one is feedback. So we're automatically pulling Salesforce certifications, trailhead badges. All they need to do is put their email address, and we're automatically pulling all that out. The type of projects that people are submitting are also different. We're looking at $60,000, $100,000 projects. So we're talking about larger implementations than what you can see on other marketplaces. The second thing is feedback. The biggest feedback about other marketplaces is that people that have never hired an IT person don't know what questions to ask when they're hiring consultants. So we're constantly providing feedback on CRM market. We're reviewing the scope of work. We're how are you going to scale? Comments. What? And how are you going to scale? So the, the review is not necessarily only done by us. We're basically outsourcing the reviews and the feedback to the consultants that are bidding on the projects. So wait, so competitors are speaking to each other or e evaluating Com and vetting each other? Competitors are asking questions about the project. The customers are providing right, answers. Right, but you said, you said they were comparing notes about each other, each, each other consultants, and that's how you verify the, the quality of the consultants. We verify the quality of the consultant based on the Salesforce reputation score that we create. So we, we're basically exposing all the information about the consultant. That's how we verify the consultant or kind of show you their reputation. So you're just verifying the badges they already have as opposed to the qualitative work that they've done for other people? We do both. So we take the, so if you look at a consultant profile, it's made out of three things. It has the objective part, which is certifications, trailhead badges, tenure. It has subjective, how they self-describe themselves. Am I a good trainer? Am I a good report person? And then the biggest part is customer reviews and testimonials. So at the end of the project, the customer reviewed the, the consultant, and the consultant reviews the customer. But you understand the catch-22 there, right? Which is the first I don't time. think you actually answered my question. I said, what's, your, what's the competitive landscape? So if someone were to do it faster, better, uh, and, and, and in a more cost-effective way, you know, do you have first mover's advantage? Do you have any patents? How do you try to differentiate yourself from the other players in the market? This, so I'm yeah, I mean, what do you do better than anybody else? What's your unfair advantage in this case? My unfair advantage is the fact that I've been in this, in this, in this ecosystem. This is my 11th Dreamforce. So I know this ecosystem Wait, inside just, out. I mean, look, you, you can't claim Salesforce that your unfair then? advantage is that you've been breathing for 11 years, right? <laughs> that you've been coming to this are, conference. Like, the other thing come is, come on, what do you do better our, than anybody else in the world? Our matching algorithm is definitely something that we're adding that I don't think others have. But if you're going to build a marketplace, you need to solve two things. The shelves need to be stocked and the aisles need to be crowded. Yep. How do you do both of those better than anybody else who's coming at this? So the, so the, the supply and demand question, right? So there, the supplies is, we've launched earlier this year in March. Supply is there. We already have 600 consultants that are registered. Getting the demand, that's really where, where our challenge is right now. Uh, we're trying to, we're hoping to hire a What is the cost of customer acquisition? 
Because we you, you're saying that you have projects and you have larger projects. So what is the cost of customer acquisition and how does that change and scale as you grow your business? So, so currently all my customers are coming from word of mouth. So it's hard for me to answer the customer acquisition question. Uh, well, but that, that directly links it to your gross margin. If you don't know the actual cost of your customer acquisition and you don't know the value of uh, the customer uh, over lifetime, then you don't know what your gross margin is. So the way, I'll, let me talk about how I make money. Should I, we, didn't, we didn't really talk about that. So we take basically 10% of the project. So if your project is 100 Hold on, you got project, nine seconds left and I don't think you've emotionally attached to anybody up here. You started your pitch with a slide like about Gartner, which I haven't heard cited since 1999. When you walk up into a setting like this, you've got three free blinks before everybody checks out and starts looking at audience members. So when you come up here, don't squander that time. Don't cite statistics. Don't tell us about market size. Attach to a narrative of a true problem you're solving, why you're doing it better than anybody else in the world, and why we be idiots to not get on board with you. Exactly. You want to... I don't think that happens. right now. You want to speak right about now. why yeah. an investor, why is this so uh, attractive to an investor, right? It's not about you doing a great job operating your business, but it's about, you know, giving us all the key metrics to make it so we can actually make a decision to see if this is the right decision from, you know, Salesforce and for you to join the Salesforce incubator. Sounds good. Thank Learned you, a lot. Great Thank job, you. Tal. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Bravo. All right, now all of the contestants are updating their slide decks right now, yeah. feverishly trying to make it work. We ready? You guys ready for number two? Yes? All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome... Can I ask you a question? Can we kick it up a notch and get a little rough with them, or is that... Chris Saka, you can do whatever you want, kiddo. Let her go. Let her go. Be nice, but let her go. All right, Misha, Marta, Claire, let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome them up. So hey everyone, I'm Marta. And I'm Misha. And we're the co-founders of Claire. Claire is a chatbot for testing consumer products. So we help brands and retailers identify their best sellers and their worst performers before they commit to any production decisions. Yeah, so we're already fortunate enough to be working with some of the largest retailers in the country. Um, some of our first customers are Kohl's and Target. And we're working with fashion leaders like Rebecca Minkoff, Ralph Lauren, and Rent the Runway. And we're solving a huge problem for them. That problem is that more than 50% of new products fail. So of the $24 trillion retail industry, $1.1 trillion are being left on the table every single year due to poor product decisions. Um, and that's not really the case in software, right? Software doesn't have this problem because software ships instantly. And software companies have developed whole methodologies like Lean, Agile, Scrum to ship and iterate product fast. But for testing physical products, enterprises rely on 100-year-old technologies, pretty much just surveys and focus groups. And like these methods are just not accurate. So it's no wonder that most new physical products that hit market fail. And that's exactly why we created Claire. You can think of Claire as a giant focus group over chat that's actually scalable and accurate. So here's how it works. Users come to our chat on Facebook Messenger and provide their feedback on new products. We take that information, pass it through our proprietary data models, and tell our brand partners how their products will perform. Our chatbot is also entirely built on Heroku. So let's take a look at a live example. Let's say that we're working with a brand called Scully, which makes awesome Western shirts. Scully sends Misha an email with a link, which drops him directly into the chat. All he has to do is just press get started to, to begin. So I press get started, and Claire sends the first message. So saddle up and tell us which cowboy shirts you like best. How about it? Yeehaw. Of course, I'll press that. Am I allowed to invest already? Sorry. Just... <laughs> um, all right, partner, would you buy this shirt? And so then I can take a closer look at the model and just see if this shirt resonates with me. And I think in this case, I'm going to say, yes, sir. Yeah, I'm going to take it. Um, so I can say, you know, whether it's a style, color, or price, or I can have a conversation with Claire, which a lot of people do. And in this case, you know, it just looks good on the model, so I'll just tell her that. Looks good oh, on model. Perfect. It does. It really does. Cool. Thanks for letting us know. Congrats. You won your first point. Do a little dance. So we keep customers engaged and reward them for their feedback by rewarding them with points and relevant gifts. 
So you can see why our completion rates are literally 10 times higher than surveys. We're also five times more accurate than traditional market research um, at predicting product performance because we pair our chats with data models on the back end. And the market we're going after is quite big when you think about the sheer number of physical products released each year. So there are 400 million products that go into market and over half of them fail. We charge from $100 to $250 per product, so you're looking at a total addressable market of $20 billion. And we'll win because we are product development and data science experts. Before this, Marta worked at Mondelez, a giant snack company, where she created the department that led new product introductions for brands like Oreo, Trident, Cadbury, across 165 countries. And Misha is the data expert. He was the top physics PhD student at the University of Chicago and consulted for companies like Microsoft on the futures of enterprise data. So if you want to join our mission of making physical products as easy to test as software, come say hi to Claire. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Right on. <laughs> well, that, was, that, that was a great pitch, by the way. Thank, Thank you for thank that. You. Um, I, I wanted to actually talk about, uh, kind of you, talk, you touched on uh, the 50% addressable market, you know, and you said this is like the market opportunity. How much of that is, do you think, addressable to you specifically and your company? Yeah. Um, so basically, like, that was for all physical products. We're currently at attacking apparel and home. That's kind of the place where we've done work. And that's about a quarter of that. So that's a $5 billion market. And uh, how many users do you think you need to actually kind of acquire to get to, let's say, profitability? How many users, yeah. customers, and also maybe you can talk yeah. about you know, the scale in terms of your so overall attraction? We're already profitable, um, ramen profitable. Um, uh -huh. So we lived on Marta's parents' futon for six months. Um, <laughs> but basically, in order to, so we're hiring now, and we'd be profitable within six months to a year. Basically, we're looking to hit 100K um, MRR within a year, and that would bring us to, well, I mean, we'll be profitable. And to answer your question directly, the beautiful thing is we don't actually have to acquire our consumers. So we go with the B2B enterprise model, so we actually use the user bases of a brand or retailer. So they send their customers to our platform, so we don't actually have to acquire the end users. Yeah, good point. Hey, Will, would you sell stuff through this? No, that's why I was going to ask. What, what do you do about, like, trolls and bombers that could, like, totally rip apart a product just because they're hating? Yeah, so the way our data models work is that we find which users are quality and predictive, essentially, because some people are just going to be saying, like, Tinder swiping on this thing and just saying yes to everything. And you can write data models that filter out for them. <laughs> um, so, and that's kind of where my background in data science comes in. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. They teach hater-proofing in physics classes <laughs> now? Well, they teach you how to like, find really distant signals in faraway galaxies, um, which is kind of similar to finding like, quality What does that have to do with users. Tinder again? Sorry, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, you just have to find the users that are actually quality and listen to them. And that's what our competitive advantage is, that we know how to do that. How much that's of the back end is algo-driven driven versus logic-driven? Um, so it's a neural net, it's machine learning. So it's totally algorithmic. 100%, so 100%. Yeah. As opposed to, so you can just grow as your data set grows exactly. and your user yeah. base grows. Exactly. You don't have to sit there and program yeah. if this, then that. There's no logic. Exactly. And it learns which you And how do you deal with responses from consumers, not just for the haters, but that don't make sense? So do you just parse and use NLP and just decide on your own if it's a valid response yeah. and discard everything else, or what do you do? So NLP is, I think, a little too early right now to really solve a lot of problems. So we mostly use a button interface, and we kind of a what guide use a button interface, and we oh, use so you just type. preset choices. So, but that's what I'm saying. So, how do you def so for each product? Then you have a process where you define all the options as you think they should be. So you don't yeah. learn the options as they come based off the responses you predefine them. That's the future, but currently we send them down paths depending. Yeah, that on explains what they it. Do. Okay. Yeah. We have a company called Reply Yes that you reply yes to buy something, but it actually knows if you say. Hell's yes or F yeah. It's kind of, computers are smart like that. So you said you're profitable. Then why do you need the 150,000? Um, I didn't hear you, excuse me. I, I said, you, you mentioned that you're profitable. So why do you need uh, this money? And, you know, what are the use of proceeds? How are you going to spend the money? Yeah, so um, we're profitable in the sense that it's just the two of us um, and we make enough money to, to live. Um, <laughs> and, but our biggest problem right now is actually account managing. These are big customers and you need to spend time with them. 
So I, I do product, Marta does sales, but we actually do account managing. So we need to hire an account manager, which we actually already have. How have you gotten the sales that you've gotten to this point through your for previous employers or previous connections? Um, so it's been a mix of cold emails, warm introductions. And how do you price it? Know. Um, so we price on a per product basis from 100 to $250 per product test. Oh, man. Ooh. Right, right? <laughs> Woo, nice job! Bravo, good job, you guys, good job, good job. Bravo, bravo. Very, very good, all right. Let's keep the momentum going. I like that move, Chris Saka. They're $20 Steve Jacobs. ahead already. Oh, sorry? They're $20 ahead already. Yeah, I saw that, I'm amused. That might be the time. Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Jacobson. Let her rip. Uh, <laughs> $20 already, perfect. I'm Steve Jacobson, and my partner Roman is in the back, and we are Opinion. We turn Salesforce into an enterprise-wide multimedia platform. What does that really mean? We have the only 100% native video application in the world that today can play and track videos on Salesforce for any company. The key part of that is the video tracking, which is a $15 billion problem for the Fortune 1000 with no visibility into their ROI. Today, all companies, really? all of you guys, are using video in your business processes. The Salesforce customer has been told that it's impossible to play videos natively on Salesforce. So they've figured out ways to play video by leveraging third-party non-native applications or by dropping a YouTube link. Look, by doing that, you actually know- That's pretty much his look every episode. Yeah. <laughs> so all, all I can say is it always helped to have good-looking models in your presentation. So. <laughs> That's for you. But by, if you're using YouTube what am I in your do video, to keep up with these other sharks. <laughs> well, look, if you're playing, if you're actually using uh, YouTube to play video, who owns that data? Google does. If you're actually using Salesforce, the Salesforce customer will own that data. Are you serious? <laughs> are you really that clueless? No, I'm just. I'm. Oh. Seriously, are you really that clueless? I haven't heard you. That video is playing. <laughs> 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 you're gonna cut out before my comeback. Sorry, mate. <laughs> Sorry. Patton <laughs> Beach, though, I gotta tell you. Uh, that video is playing 100% native on Salesforce, and 100% of the data is in Salesforce. And look, we're tracking when people are bailing out, not the guys are bailing out, but if they did, Opinion would show that data. Opinion is the only application that could play podcasts, MP4, and videos on Salesforce. But that's not the real problem we're solving. The real problem we're solving today is that to understand the true impact of your multimedia investment, which videos are driving the most success, which videos are leading to case deflection, do you even know if people are bailing out? How do you know if they are? What if you're actually offending an entire group of your customers and prospects? Look, this stuff matters, but up until now, the data didn't exist. With Opinion, it does. Let's talk about John, the VP of marketing, who has a million dollar spend to drive pipeline. Today, John's making videos because he thinks he has to. His competition's making videos. But here's the problem. John has no idea, in, is making his videos, and has no idea the true impact of the videos he's making. Therefore, John has no ROI. And this is no small problem just for John. In fact, the Fortune 1000, like we talked about, is a $15 billion problem. Today, if John had Opinium, he'd know exactly what videos were driving the most success within his organization. With Opinium, that $15 billion investment no longer goes into an analytics black hole. Let's talk about the magic that's gonna happen. You guys are gonna hear a lot about Salesforce Einstein and the power of artificial intelligence. Now take that Opinium data we've been talking about, and now leverage the power of machine learning to be able to prescribe videos to users based on data science. By using Einstein with Opinium data, you'll be able to prescribe the right video to the exact right person at the exact right time based on real-time data, not human speculation, which will lead to a fast experience that's faster, more affordable, and more accurate than any other platform in the world today. So that's what we do, but who are we? Uh, since our launch 12 months ago, we have customers like American Express, Stryker, and Dannon Corporation, along with 100 other customers globally. We are a 1% pledge company across, across our business for equity, product, and, uh, and time. Nice. Look, this is not our first rodeo. Roman and I have been building apps on Salesforce since 2009, and we know how to build a Salesforce company. We know how to execute because we've done it before. And we also uh, know how to use the, the Salesforce ecosystem to drive this business. Guys, we're solving a $15 billion problem on the most powerful platform in the world today, and we have a significant head start. Who's with me? All right.
my partner, Roman, is going to make his way up here for Q&A, but we can go ahead and start. What are you doing to make that data actionable? So it's great you're servicing video analytics. There's obviously a lot more happening around video. Video is when people are emotionally attached. That might be the conversion opportunity. Yep. What are you doing to take that data and then plug it into the funnel? That's a great question. Uh, because we're doing it on Salesforce with all the CRM, the sales data, the marketing data, the service cloud data, we can take all that information along with the video consumption data. That's what makes it powerful because the non-native applications, they have the video insights, but they don't have the actual data that tells what it did for people. How did it impact their life? Did it help you solve that case? Did it help you drive revenue? Did the salesperson make that, that deal that faster? I'm actually, I'm not sure if yeah. I understand why this is unique because uh, yeah. video consumption data is very similar to, like, if you were to look at files, whatever other formats that people use. Why can't Salesforce do this, for example, themselves, right? You know. <laughs> That's a great question. Are you, uh, I, Look, Salesforce could go build video. Because you can on, yeah. leverage all the APIs that are available out there. Unless there's something unique about your AI and your big data algorithms, then it's just another input. No, it's, no, but see, it's not. It's a fully native video solution on Salesforce. It's not about the APIs or the integration. You could do that with the third-party non-native apps or even YouTube, which I know you know very well. But it's actually playing the, the video natively in Salesforce as well as the podcast and the MP3 because now all the data is in Salesforce. Because if you're using API, you can only push a certain amount of data into Salesforce. And look, 97% of marketers use YouTube today and 0% really have that data in Salesforce. Yeah, what, I think her point yeah. is, why, why can't somebody else just do the same integration? What is it that you do? It's not an integration. Or, so, or you making it native, not integrated, yeah. right? So what is unique about your Why someone else do a native implementation of video? Well, let's, it's a great look. At the end of the day, we can't prevent anybody. Salesforce is an open platform. Right. We can't prevent them from doing what we have. So, but, That's but actually again, what so we're looking If we decide to start, because we have streaming backgrounds, and we yeah. decide, okay, we'll do a native implementation. Yeah. What is about your um, Appium, whatever it is, what is it about your company that you're going to say, eh, they suck because... Well, I'm not going to say you suck, but we'll compete. I would say, awesome. but yeah. uh, here's the thing: we're native on Salesforce. We've been doing this. We know how to do it. Our competitive advantage is a: we know Salesforce better than anybody does. We've been doing it for 18 or 14 years. We know how to build on Salesforce, and we have the first. We're first to market. We have clients like American Express. In fact, if you go down to the uh, the demo for employee community, you're going to see ViewTrack, which is our product name, in every single employee you community demo. You see the demo. difficulty there, right? Because anybody can say the same thing. Yeah. No one's going to walk in and say, we just did a native application of video in Salesforce, and we suck, and they're better. Yeah. So you know, your answer to the question is you have a first mover's advantage. I, is I that how you're unique? For, is for, that the yeah, answer? I mean, look, Salesforce is, in, we, there's two parts of that question, right? One is we know how to do it. It would take someone to go actually learn and take the years. If you guys have experience, but it's going to take you a long time to learn how to do that in Salesforce. We've been doing this for 14 years. Second is we are the first to market. And because of that, that's why we're, we can go out and actually get these so customers. So how many installs do you have? We have 100 customers today. Okay. Including American Express, Dan, and we have clients in Australia, clients in Australia, I mean, uh, England, UK, Finland, and we've done it all from Manhattan Beach. So what could we do if we actually had money to go hire more sales and marketing people and canvas the entire world? We own the Salesforce ecosystem. We know these guys. We know how to work with them. For you to actually get into that, you'd have to learn how to work with the Salesforce ecosystem. It's not just the technology. I, mean, I know you, remember, you, you, know, you realize this is the guy who put radio on the internet, right? I mean, he joined the Trace Comas Club. I read, hey, I, w I watched the videos. I know exactly what you guys have when both done, sold that by the company way. for $5.7 billion, which is almost Donald Trump money. Yeah, well... <laughs> I'm not touching that right now. I'm staying away from that whole conversation. So but it's not just video, right? Because see, that's actually what the other guys do. That's what our competition does. You go play a video application, great. We can play MP3s and podcasts. We're doing podcasting. Not difficult stuff to do, but again, you have to understand what the Salesforce customer wants. I get that. Look, and this is our world. The reason I asked the question is, yeah. you're, you're gonna have two seconds, you're gonna have less than four minutes to walk in and convince a customer, yeah. right? You've gotta just say, here's why they can't do it. You can't see just be, say just because we're better. I can tell you Amex saw our stuff and bought the product in 15 minutes. One Great call. job, Steve! Thank you very much. Up the stay. Oh, yeah, actually, you stay here. You stay here with me. All right, all right, Steve, you come over here. Marta, come on up. Tall, come on up. Um, now, weren't those pitches amazing? Let's give them another hand, shall we? Three, there's only three. Bravo. Mars. All right. Mars. Now, Mars the judges are going to take their iPads and do their judging. I'm going to give everyone their 50K. Chris? Right on. Welcome. Wait, I gotta spend this here? I can... Yes, my friends, yes. Okay, so, 
You guys have your Cody bucks to give your money. You have your iPads to do your judging, yes? Yeah. You're judging. And now you're going to talk to me for a minute while they're doing that. How did, how you do it? You just, you just pitched in front of some of the biggest, most amazing human beings in the industry. How you feeling? Amazing. Amazing? No, it's really good. <laughs> really good. How sweet. Come on. You should say, like, I'm awesome. Come on. Amazing. There we go. Cal? I was educational. Edu oh. <laughs> Cal, good job. We'll take it. Well, education is good. Education is good, Tal. We'll take it. Are you guys locked and loaded? You still walking around? Yeah? Yeah. Waiting? What are our questions? Charizard, yeah? Done? Almost? Sorry? What are the questions you got? What are the questions? Um... What was the thing you were most nervous about when you started this? You can only say one thing, it has to be a bullet. What were you most scared about up here? Uh, the size. The size of the room? Yeah. Oh, okay. You guys? Yeah, same here. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Tall? Spread out. I'm gonna ask, yay, and no one's gonna respond. But then Mark responded first. So. Oh, all right, all right. We'll take that, we'll take that. Okay. You know what I was nervous about? I feel like there's someone behind me. <laughs> <laughs> no, just about a thousand people. Not too many, Chris. No, Don't worry. It's actually my partner um, moment, so he is behind you, so you better... Uh... All right. Mark Cuban? I'm not done yet. Hold on. Not done yet. All right. Will, what'd you think? There's, there's, um, I, I really, I don't want to be disrespectful to anyone else on pitch, but I really, really like Claire a lot. You like Claire? Great. Great. We're just going to start this. Why? Why did you like Claire so much, Will? Are we starting? I think I have too much money. You gave me another additional 10000 I, I can't take it out. <laughs> that wasn't me. I know. That's the finance team. No, just kidding. That was someone else. Ah, good. You have your money now. So you liked Claire? Yeah. All right, let's begin. Let's start. We're going to begin with Will. Why did you like Claire? Well, tell us about it. to us. Um, the question, the, my first worry was how do you stop Somebody's watching. just, the internet is just full of schmutt and a lot of just bad opinions and people that abuse it. So my first thing was how do you, how is it hater proof? How is it, you know, and their answer was awesome. And the vision of it is, is amazing. I like, I liked it a lot. Awesome. Uh, I think I would also uh, choose Claire. I wish I would actually had more time with you guys so can, I can ask them more questions. But I think with the four minutes that you had, your pitch was very clear. Your competitive advantage was clear. Your use of proceeds was clear. And I think you're both very talented, bright people. So I would say within the four minutes, I would say that would be my pick. You were liking them. All right. All right. All right. Mr. Saka, you ready? Yeah, all right, look, so by the way, I busted your chops, but that's how I express love, except when I bust Cuban's chops, because there's no love there. But um, <laughs> uh, with the Opinium guys, I, I, look, you guys have a clear track record, Manhattan Beach represent. Uh, I, I do think this is the kind of thing where there probably is some first mover advantage, particularly if you can build an addiction to cash flows that come from converting on this data. There's no doubt, you know, we were seed investors in Optimizely, and it's hard to break in with a new analytics platform, but once you realize that that links right up to your money hose and it's just throwing bills in your face all day, then people can't get off it, right? That's what we're going for. Yeah. <laughs> um, but with the Claire folks, I think there was something actually innovative going there. I love messaging platforms. The open rate on SMS is about 100%, and the conversion rates are over 50% for a lot of platforms. We've got investments in that space I really like, and I think it's smart to be going down that path to, you know, versus an app install versus trying to do something on mobile web to go right through that messaging channel, particularly now that it's rich, is really interesting. You've got a lot of work to do on the NLP and the AI on the back end, but that's pretty fascinating stuff. Thank you. Anything for Tall? Or you already kind of gave him his feedback? Yeah, Tall, I mean, look, you're just, this room, there's 6,000 people in this room, another 50,000 people watching, and there are so many of these buzzwords that are just worn out. I mean, this guy's been in the industry long enough. He can probably teach you some of them. And so I think the key is enterprise doesn't have to be soulless. It, the, the decision maker on the other end is still a human being with a spouse and kids who likes music and cries at movies. And so start with something that they can literally emotionally attach to. At the end of the day, they got to sell the decision up and down and you'd much rather be tugging at heart than at brain or just at some actuarial file with Gartner statistics. I really didn't even know they still existed, by the way. No offense to Gartner, but well, they a lot exist. of them to Gartner. They exist. Mr. Cuban. Are you done? I'm never done. <laughs> That's the damn truth. Um, so, sorry, with CRM. Um, 
Look, first, naming the size of the industry is your start when you've got to just hit the nail on the head on why you're different. Everybody names the size of the industry, and that's always a red flag, right? And that was, that's something you mentioned as well. Of course, the industry's big. We expect that. And just to suggest that if you only get a small percentage, you'll be big too, you're just taking away important time. Second, bring, nothing, no disrespect to Angie's list, but using that as a point of reference in, in a scenario where you're going to be selling to you know, high-end decision makers, that, that's tough, Right? Third, there was no reference in terms of competition, Elance, et cetera. I'm involved with a company called Hourly Nerd, which vets in a lot, I think, higher end um, than, than you do. And I think when I talked about the Catch-22, it's all right. You have to have enough consultants and you have to have enough customers. You have to qualify them. So I thought that was a challenge. I'll jump over to Apti and you guys, look, I get where you're going. You're trying, being native, that gives you a significant advantage, but you have to run. You're in a race more than anything else. Because the first question, everybody, you're, you're already competing but with do-it-yourself. Right? And so you're trying to make a qualitative explanation that you know, it's worth it to deal with you because you'll reduce the hassle factor and they'll make their lives easier and then the data will be there to, to add incremental value. But you've got to, you've got to be more definitive right, up the, right off the bat rather than trying to make it seem like you're solving this complicated problem, just that you're the pros from Dover, right? That you have this core differentiation that it's going to make their lives easier and better. Claire, I like what you're doing. The challenge is chatbots are everywhere. Right, and you know that, and so what's gonna happen, you've already priced it very reasonably cheap, right? Because it's gonna be, so the challenge I have with your business is just in scale in terms of, of size, right? In your case, the number of products makes an enormous difference. How many products, you know, is a company gonna test over the period of a year? Let's just say it's 100, right? You're making $10,000 from your biggest customers anywhere, and so they may, re they may test it again and again and again, and you may get repeat use. So I think your challenge is in pricing. You know, Warren Buffett says, said it best. The, the companies with the most pricing power are the ones he's most interested in. So if your tech is really differentiated, I like the fact you're not using logic. It's truly back end. I like how you use data to, you know, remove your haters, right? But you're really, the proof is in the pudding. Isn't that the fact that you're living in the basement off the couch and that's how you're making money? The proof is what's your pricing power. So I, if I'm you, I'm going out there and pricing it at $10,000, Right? See what happens. Wherever that pricing takes you, you've got to figure out your pricing power because that's going to define your value to your customers. Just trying to underprice to get scale, you're going to be running in the gerbil cage forever. So those are my comments. Awesome. I just want to finish. I didn't comment on the other two, two companies. I think it takes a lot of courage to come here and pitch in front of these many number of people, and you did a tremendous job doing that. And I think the best entrepreneurs, what they do is they take that feedback, they pivot, and they make it better. So just because, you know, we felt that maybe in four minutes, you know, this wasn't like the best pitch, but I think it's about getting that feedback and making it better. So thank you all for, you know, kind of uh, being so courageous. Cool. Thank Absolutely. You. Awesome. You should all feel amazing. That's very cool. Okay. Now we get to it a little bit, right? Let's give away the money. Shall we? Who wants to start? Uh, I'm curious about this currency. <laughs> <laughs> At first, I, I just, for, what, I mean, what's yours look like? At this first, is a Cody thought, buck. Yeah. Well, then I looked a little more closely at mine, and it looks a lot like a Benioff buck. Yeah, You're not supposed to draw on the Cody Bucks. Come sales on. Force crime to that doesn't the look currency. anything like yeah. Mark. Come on. What are you I talking about? Rough. All right. I got the. Anyway. I loved it. Good job. All right. <laughs> Money. Who are you giving it to? Now you can spread it out. You can give it all the one. You can give it. You can half it. I'm Your call. call. Well, and then I am look, waiting for the final winner. That here you go. Handy. Cuban needs a new shirt. <laughs> and so. No? <laughs> Chris, I'm just going to tell you, someday you may reach a point in your life where you don't have to wear a certain shirt. You can just wear whatever the hell you want. <laughs> yeah, because right now I dress like I'm going on a job interview, right? I mean, I do this just to just saying. impress all the higher ups. Look, you talk about, you know, you talk about the difference between F you money and F everyone money. This is an F everyone shirt. <laughs> And that's exactly what we think when we see it. <laughs> Ooh, I love it. All right. Well, you get, who are you going to give the money to? Come on, gents. Okay, so right. we, we don't want... lady, let's go. Okay, wait. Can the judges huddle for a second? Huddle. Uh, Do your right. thing. So, I'll huddle with you guys. Yeah. So, that was pretty awesome. You just got some pretty savvy investment advice from four people that definitely know what they're doing, yeah? What change are you going to make when you go back home, Tal? Regardless of the outcome of this. 
changes in my life. Well, just, no, not in your life. But, but, you know, based on, I mean, do whatever you want. That's your business. I mean, you just heard from four incredibly no, I make it, successful, famous people. I want to make it a little more, people. I think, make it a little more emotional and less about the statistics. Okay, yeah. that's good. All right, what about you two? Yeah, I think based on Mark's feedback, that was super useful. So we can take another look at pricing and just yeah. see if we can go. Yeah, you, when Mark Cuban tells you to raise the price, maybe you should, <laughs> huh? I would. All right, Steve, what do you got? What do you take? Uh, hire sales guys. Let's go big with this thing fast. All right. So, well, who's, we, who's looking for a job? <laughs> yeah, apparently he's hiring. Okay, well, that's good. All right. What's the one thing you're going to tell your friends about this when you're like sitting at home, you know, normal, relaxed, wearing tennis shoes? What do you say? <laughs> that I am extremely grateful about this opportunity. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's amazing just stand here, so yeah. thank you. Good, that's awesome. That's a good, grateful is a good thing. Yeah. yeah, we had no idea. Like, Marta just applied to like shot in the dark and Each of us this is crazy. And Chris, yeah. One, 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 yeah, so what are you gonna take away? Um, we pitched yeah. on Shark Tank Live. <laughs> yeah, well, not Shark Tank, but yeah, Dream Pitch, yeah, all right. Um, no problem, so what, Dream what Pitch, I, not ABC, what am I gonna Salesforce. Say? Yeah, what are you gonna say to your friends? It's not my friends, it's actually my wife. And okay, when you say you, your wife, even better. Thank you for putting up with me the last three Aww, weeks straight away. That's, so. We should all say that to our spouses and friends. All right, you've made some decisions. Tell us about them. I think Mike can't speak to it. We made a joint decision. Go yeah, ahead, um, we want, everybody did a great job. And we wanted to, to show the confidence and respect we had for everybody. We, we all know that being an entrepreneur is not easy. And it's not easy to start a company. It's not easy to go from concept to implementation and just the amount of effort involved. So we all wanted to be clear that we respect everything that you guys have done. And rather than just picking a winner per se, we kind of wanted to spread the wealth and, um, and demonstrate that while we thought CRM and Appian were great, we thought Claire was the best. So Claire, you, you guys got the, the majority, but you guys earned quite a bit as well. So pick up your winnings. Are you gonna tell us the breakdown, Mark? Nope. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not crossing Mark Cuban. I'm not crossing Mark Cuban. All right. Well, go get your little, go get your vases Collect and your count cash. your money. Hold on. One more thing. We have yeah. one more final final right. based on all the judging. Yeah. Here is the end end, and I'm gonna just announce the ultimate winner who gets to move into the incubator. Ladies and gentlemen, a big hand for Claire. Good job, man. Congratulations. Great job. Congratulations. Are you taking your Cody bucks? Don't mess with those. Congratulations. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that we can safely say that the Dream Twitch was pretty amazing. I would like to thank our contestants, our winners. All of you are winners. It's the truth. You all won a whole bunch of great stuff, and you got an amazing experience with four of the most interesting people I've ever met. Congratulations. Yeah. We're going to get you guys all sorted. Go on, have a seat, contestants. And then... There will be another dream pitch, I imagine, so stay tuned. 